What is going on guys? So today we I want to review the Endless Engine Render Challenge. I'm super excited, super proud of this. I think um, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the lessons I learned in school specifically helped me with getting the best result for this video. Um, we'll run through what was modeled, what was kind of put together through CG Trader. Um, I didn't model every single element, but the main focus was the motorcycle. Like, ironically, when this challenge came out, I was already working on the motorcycle and I would say 50% done, but I want to show you kind of the process of my modeling phases, as well as kind of run over, a run through the video that I created and some of the stuff I did. If I skip over every, anything, um, specifically want to know just feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll make sure I get to it and if not I can I can always create separate videos as well this is very new to me this is very new as far as like this style of video so yeah uh, without further ado I don't know why I have this open So I built, uh, completely modeled a Maya. We're gonna kind of start, I'm gonna start from where I started in a sense of, um, I know that makes no sense, but I'm gonna start this video. I wanna start the review, kind of like the first scene I saved within Maya. I should, I usually save and see segments, so I should have a very early form of the bike. And then I kind of wanna step through these different phases of um, working it on working on this week by week so i'm curious to see what's in this video so um so yeah so this is kind of how i start i start from primitive shapes um in a sense of cubes cylinders spheres uh and then i will take that and try to the first thing you want to do or first thing i do is try to nail down scale proportion and um just overall shape like just very it's almost it's like a block out phase that i go through I look at a lot of the a lot of the key elements on what kind of forms this motorcycle. As you can see, like we have a frame. I know there's going to be fenders. I wonder if anything's hidden. No, I didn't even make the fenders yet. But there, so there's fenders. I see like the base structure. I'll try to build out, and just also this is just trying to get it in the general area, just so I can understand how big the wheels need to be in comparison to the frame, in comparison to the tank, etc., etc. This is like, I don't know, maybe a few hours worth of work, maybe even like the first um, session of me working on this project. We'll just step through the different phases, so cool. And then something also I like doing is I like to have a reference, like a side reference that I can kind of like, um, in a sense in the, what is this? front view I guess I built this on the z-axis x-axis um, I always have a front view to, uh, to model off of to get relatively close in as far as in regards to like starting points like I'll just model out the wheel roughly and then model out the frame real roughly and then um, after that I always like to have two references of the same exact thing at the same angle because then when I'm actually modeling I can kind of always see it in the background. Um, it's just something I do, I don't know if that's the best practice. <laughs> and so here I can see that I started on the fender, um, it looks like I was just, I remember start focusing on the fender first, trying to get that shape and get an understanding of the shape too because like when you start breaking down drawings you see like very interesting choices design choices that you have to allow to make sense um all right next yeah so as i kind of i mean this we're kind of jumping ahead but i also want to make sure one it's not an hour long video but two that we just kind of focus on some of the key areas and if you want a further breakdown on how to model maybe we model something live in live stream or something i don't know um but this is we're still not done here i think this is like 15 out of 20, so we still got, I see, yeah, uh, what is that, seven days, an additional set week after this is what I worked on it for. So, but as you can see that, um, I, I do I do my best to try to model everything, even down to like the bolts, because something that I find it allows for uh, ambient inclusion, and there's certain, there's just certain, certain things I like modeling, as far as like it, 
bring in another level of realism or the style that I personally want to get after. So this is prior to beveling. Um, I usually bevel last. Let's see if you can see, like I'll work on the motorcycle or object itself for as long as I can until I get to everything complete and then I'll start uh, many phases of beveling. You see that in my file structure. And then after the bevel, I do the UV process, etc. And then we have some character and environment stuff later on. But um, but as you can see, like something I want to point out, let's see. Like you can see it's very rough. Like for the swing arm, the swing arm's not built yet. Um, it doesn't have any attachments to the frame as far as the shock's concerned. And it doesn't necessarily make sense. Also, in addition, um, I added uh, later on, you'll see um, a brake pedal. And it's pretty cool because something that I truly get enjoyment out of is trying to make concept art make sense in reality. And what I mean by that is, right, so specifically in this instance, it, in the concept art, the, it looks like the front brake is on the left handle, which on a motorcycle would be on your right handle. Um, so I had to build a system that made the concept art make sense and match, but also in reality um, would be uh, functional in a sense. So I have, I actually took the, the brake line and tried to match it exactly, still coming up, but in the concept art, it looks like it comes up and over, but I have this coming swinging around to the brake pedal and then this I actually made a coolant reservoir instead of having anything to do with the brakes so this comes down to the radiator so <laughs> it's just small things like that that I truly genuinely enjoy like taking concept art trying to figure out how to make it make sense and also coming up with your own original twist on different aspects within the, the actual uh, piece that you're working on. For every time I'm modeling, I try to pull in as many references as I can. I have like this whole uh, reference board and I use an app called, that's it's called Pure Ref and it's fantastic. But um, as you can see, where are my references? Here are all my references. So I only bring that up because I tried to look at the same artists and try to match the work. And this is like another one of his pieces, right? But on this piece, it has a, um, a two, yeah, what is it? A two to one, I guess, for, from a header standpoint. So I tried to build a similar to this, but also paying homage more, leaning towards the, the original reference. So I'll take pieces of what I see here and kind of integrate it. So what I did here for the exhaust, as you can see, and this is still not done, but I'll build kind of like a two to one system that goes into like a, you know, somewhat of a, like a muffler slash, uh, yeah, all that good stuff. So yeah, and, and it's the same thing that goes for trying to envision what the swing arm looks like. I wanted it to rep represent kind of what the front caliper was doing. And in my mind, this is a magnetic caliper that uh, controls speed in a sense of uh, braking power as well. So uh, it, again, I just kind of try to make up stories that make sense slash uh, feel cool. Like it kind of gives me purpose. So in the concept art, the brake caliper has like these two knobs that come up and then a, um, another hose that kind of swings in and what i try to do is like pretend that this is a magnetic some type of mag magnet magnetic system that has a piston piston that kind of pulls and pushes magnets in a very specific specific way again i don't know like logistics on how it works i didn't build that but um i wish i did that'd be kind of cool but anyway um that kind of start that slow down and and move the the actual wheel that's why it has no uh, chain. So again, all just still in somewhat of a primitive state. Like if you see and smooth these out yet, like, uh, like eventually I smooth these out and get everything worked out. But, and if, I hope I'm not going too fast. This is my first time doing this. So we'll see if this video actually turns out good. So let's kind of step to, um, Let's step to the final, right? All UV'd. Um, so after 
After I am done with modeling, I will then go in and make sure that every edge is beveled, every crack. And also, a little side note is that always, we're always running cleanup too, obviously we're about me. At every phase, especially in the beveling, so when I'm done beveling, I clean up all the geometry. There's a cleanup tool if you guys are familiar. I don't know how, how many of you guys are familiar with Maya, but um, we run this cleanup tool that tells you basically if it's clean and what it what a clean geometry is. Like it doesn't want end gons, uh, doesn't want uh, faces. So here is the final motorcycle. This is after everything smooth beveled and completed. The some depending on the object I'll go in and not only bevel but kind of run uh, somewhat of a smoothing pass just to get the exact shape I want like but something I just want to highlight is kind of how I imagined the suspension to the frame oh, okay. let's see hopefully I grab everything let's see all right cool so this is kind of like the rear suspension. I have a bolt here that I forgot to grab. But anyway, um, I have a rear, this is a, my rear suspension in a sense, um, that how I imagine, how I imagine this working. Um, and again, this is all driven by concept art. So what I will do is take a look at a lot of single swing, single side swing arms and just take inspiration and reference by images found on the interwebs. So, and I do that with everything, as you can see, like the shop, and I mean, um, even all the handlebars, like getting an understanding how they mount to a triple tree that is similar to the one that is in reference. So, um, references, even bent radiators, like what does it look like? I mean, we've all, I mean, I think most of us are car guys at this point, like we've all installed radi radiators and we think we know what, what they are, but like when you go sit down model them, you kind of forget the intricacies of where everything is and how it mounts and how it could mount to your design, etc. Um, anyway, so same thing with frame. I mean, I go through literally everything and try to pull reference for anything that I may be in question. Um, that I can't solve for in within the original concept art. So, um, so yeah. So this is like the system that I built for the rear. <laughs> I can't. I can't think, man. And then after that, uh, this is again towards the UV phases. So everything has UVs. I, my workflow is I model. Um, I UV it based on material and kind of what they're referenced. Like, I'll group a bunch of bolts together and then mask it, mask them out. Um, and I'll do like, I'm trying to think, where's my hierarchy? Select all materials with objects. So you can see that um, these are bolts, straps, and clamps. So every bolt, strap, and clamps um, I grouped together for the UVs. This this is kind of like to get all the small stuff. That way you don't have to. It really helps out for my workflow for Substance Painter because if you let's say you know you want the bolts to all be one very specific material, you can get, just boom get it all done instead of going through every single bolt, building the material, or even assigning the material. You just kind of get it done there. Tires. I'll give you a real good example actually. Um, so tires. Specifically, I wanted them on a separate UV, um, or I guess it's called a U-DIM, technically. Um, I wanted it on a separate U-DIM because of how I was going to texture it. Like, I know I needed a lot of detail and a lot of uh, resolution. So, and I'm still learning too. I'm not a expert expert top level been doing this for 45 years like i you know i think three four years into my journey and trying to figure it out so all with a grain of salt um and also i might keep learning new ways of doing stuff but this is how i do it right now so i put it on a separate material so that way i can have great resolution when i go to texture um the bigger texel density these maps are the more uh 
the more resolution and um, details you can get. That's how you like make something look really real. Once the bike's done, I knew that I wanted to texture it and we'll go through the texturing process. High level, of course. Oh, and I did just a little side note. I'm not gonna review every single thing, but um, I actually ended up modeling a very specific road I wanted too. So just as an example, um, I actually hand modeled this road and textured everything because I wanted it to have a very specific look for um, the scene I was working on. So uh, I don't always, you can always get this stuff online, but for me, I really wanted a very specific, specific look. And something I learned is that if it's gonna be a repeatable pattern, I know this too, I don't know why I didn't do it, I should have left a little gap here. Like I should have shifted this over, left a gap, because you can see they bump against each other every once in a while. In the scene, the, the camera never catches it because you're going too fast. But anyway, um, just a side note. Uh, so you'll see, you'll see that in substance, uh, the materials to me sometimes always look a little better than Blender. I haven't perfected the process of getting them from here to Blender in the same exact manner. And I've done a lot of research and I just can't. It just never gets to where I want it to be. But as you can see, I wanted, I had this super clean at first, but it looked like a toy. And I, I've grown to become a fan of just dirt, grime, rust. The stuff we hate. Because <laughs> it always makes the materials look really cool. Um, and you can build story in. Like something that I love to do is build a narrative within materials. Like, uh, and and you guys will be able to test this. Like one of my, I think if you guys are super early followers, when I had an SR in my 240, it used to run super, super rich when I first got it. And it used to shoot black fuel out the tailpipe and it would leave like a black smudge across um, my storage unit. So in this, adding like a huge black grease puddle in a sense of horrible for traction, but really cool for story. And stuff like that is like what I love to build in and and, and just kind of work in materials and also keep true to the reference. Like, let's pull up that reference again to show you kind of like how I interpreted some of these materials. And there's, I still, I went back and I can still see things I want to fix and remodel, but it's, it's all good. It's all good. Um, come on, baby. Come on, there we go. All right, so, so cool. Some cool things I interpreted and adjusted. Um, and also missed, like I, I, the one thing that I really, it was hard to get because this, these angles, the angles of the actual handlebars and, and kind of how everything li lined up wouldn't, didn't make sense to do it when I was working in 3D. And you can see like, uh, and I'm still trying to get better at that too. It's not, it might be that I am still have a lot of room to improve. But let's stay on the focus stuff and on inter interpretation. Like this X on, for a while I couldn't figure out what this was. I thought it was like a box that was like, almost like a mounting plate. But then I, well, I zoomed in and I saw that it has like these, these little swoops here and I just interpret them as holes for the, the license plate. And then I took this and pretended that that was like embossed into the metal. So as you can see here, granted all dirty at this point, but I am adjusted. I created material that had a just, I painted in a height map that allowed me to have like an embossed um, X there. And granted, added a lot of dirt and grime to it, but it adds for a lot of character. I always usually redo anything emissive in Blender. Um, and I'm still figuring it out because just on this last project that I'm working on for a client, I actually didn't do it. I just used, I actually used this material. So I might say something different in the future, but um, I, I knew the heads up display and as well as headlights would be lit um, so I didn't, I just threw on some screen, like a screen, a basic screen material. Cause I still use this for rendering, for uh, work in progresses, for social, etc. So, but overall, um, 
super happy and proud of this project. I really, really love this motorcycle. It was so much fun to build. After that, I'll take it into Blender. And um, what was what was left was rigging. Oh no, we had to build a character. So um, I did for the character. I did a mixture of modeling as well as as um, a little bit of kit bashing. I found a already because I didn't want to go through uh, the process of rigging a, a full body character because I don't necessarily have that because I've been working on creatures for so long. Um, so I found a, I actually bought a um, full character and dressed him up as well as kind of reshaped him. Just do a quick overview of the textures of the different assets that I've built for the actual character. I knew I wanted him to have some type of headgear. Um, whether it was a helmet, mask, or goggles. And it was kind of for two factors. One factor was that I didn't, I knew that we had a very limited time to create this challenge. It was five, a five week challenge. And I didn't want to go through the process of one rigging, but also facial expressions and animation. So I took a lot of inspiration from like cyberpunk, the anime, um, as well as just what I would personally wear. Um, I love puffer jackets, like the green puffer jackets with the the orange insides. Um, I always find them really cool. So, so here's the jacket that we were able to get, and um, for this one, I just retextured it. I I created new UV maps, I believe, but then also recycled assets. So I'm just gonna go through a few of them. The best thing to do is like I was working on this project that I had to build and make. I think a hundred outfits. I was working on an NFT project for someone, and um, I have a bunch of shoes that I was able to kind of get through and and get to. So my favorite shoe to wear is like either Jordan ones or Air Force ones. Like those are my favorite. But I knew I wanted it to be like dusty and grimy. So I built. I took the a previous asset that I had and basically just made it super dirty. Um, and kind of like just reimagined, you know what I mean? Like super wrinkly, beat up, old leather that's cracking, even just like little rips in the cotton. So much fun. Um, in addition, uh, finally, just the last one I want to review is the helmet, because the helmet came out pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to imagine a helmet for that motorcycle. Um, I wanted it to kind of match color and somewhat material. The biggest thing is that I wanted it to have uh, kind of that beat up look still. So super proud of this material, like the, the texturing of this helmet. Like I, it's just a cool looking helmet. And the choice of like orange with the, with the te dirt teal. I just made that, I don't know if it's a real color. I don't even know if it is teal technically. This might be green. I'm proud of this one as well and then after I get everything done I usually build a bunch of different blender projects and s specifically focus on one thing at a time so I'll build the rig first and um, I'll rig everything or I'll material everything make sure the colors and materials feel good they look good and then I will start to kind of rig and then start to build the environment. And also, this is all based off um, Fernando, I forget his last name. I'll put him in the description without a doubt. Um, it's a, it's a, the name, the, the style is based off two things. The concept of our art, of course, but really Akira. Like, I wanted to have a, a, a reimagined Akira vibe. Not a, a um, reflection of, like not an exact image of, but I wanted it to feel like it could live in that world of Neo Tokyo. I always kept that in mind when building the environment, when building the characters. I watched the movie like every single night for, I think like, I don't know, uh, probably like 10 days straight, just to, especially that, that opening sequence of like the first 20 minutes, I watched it every single night when I went to bed, just to kind of key in some nuances so I'm gonna go to the end of the of my project structure just so I can I can just review everything we did um, I was able to get the the motorcycle rig the character was already rigged I textured everything life was good and I hope my OBS doesn't 
break. Cool, so here's my um, scene that I built. And it is a little wonky, because some of the stuff was kit bash, like this, this, the actual city I found online, and then um, I modeled the road itself, and put in some sphere lights, and found some tree, I mean, uh, what is it? I have this plug-in for trees, and and grass that's I forget what it's called so um, thanks to the internet I put out a poll uh, kind of my th two, three thoughts on which uh, the character should do I think the the first one won. it was drift in um, get on the throttle like drift in full throttle then let up to prepare to wheelie um, the other one was like jump over like uh, one of the scenes in Akira was like uh, one of the guys jumps over the, the grate. So yeah, we, we confirmed the, the action, and what I did first was model in, or not model in, animate the motorcycle um, for movement speed and timing. I think that's correct. I should start with that we were provided a specific template to work off of if in this project. I ha we had a camera that we couldn't touch, in a sense, and then... Um, Kind of like a, a suggested distance to travel. Um, though, in hindsight, I kind of wish I, I had to retime this a few, like it was going way too fast for a long time, for majority of it. So I animated the motorcycle to do, let's pop this off so I can show you. So in a sense, the camera was already done and I had just had to make fun, just a little bit of tweaks. And I knew I wanted it to drift in from the right lane to the left lane. So I I modeled in what I felt should happen as he breaks, it compresses, and then, and again, I do pull references too. Um, and then as the wheel lifts, there's like a, a thro um, a clutch kick in a sense to wheelie, it, unless if you're in like second gear, but that's a whole different story. Um, and then originally I had him trying to get his balance um, and it's fun, it's like I did a bunch of passes. I'll put them up for sure, uh, all the different passes, and you can see how it's way too fast, it's way too jittery, and um, how I animate, um, the way I animate in school, or I learn in school is like, I do block outs, like start to finish, all right, and then I go in the middle, and then in the middle of that, and then in the middle of those. So it's like key, 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 or key, 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 and then, um, like key breakdowns and then breakdowns in between. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. That's what I learned. I learned in education. Um, and it really helped out because like I looked at this now and I'm like, dude, this is actually really cool. Um, really super proud of this. So after I'm done animating the motorcycle, and I, that is absolutely confirmed because I don't want to animate, for me, two things at a time. I'd rather just focus on the motorcycle first because it has the less, it has, um, less controls so I handled that first and then after that I went in and adjusted the character so he's he comes in slides his foot um, his foot's kind of off just because he maybe thinks he's gonna fall and we all do that <laughs> We're like, ah! and yeah it was just fun to counteract count counter steer um, something that's really cool is to use my previous experience in drifting and riding um, and the stuff we do, I love using it for my art and, and the projects that I'm working on. It gets me so happy because it makes me, kind of like pulls my soul together in a sense of like what I wish I could do and had time for on top of something I'm absolutely passionate and almost obsessed with. So um, I'll animate the Mr. Miyagi, no I'm just kidding. Um, and then I, again, I wanted him to break here. So you see, it's hard to uh, turn this off. I animated him, he gets, he hits the break. And again, I knew this was gonna be real fast. So the animation's like, some of it's absolutely not perfect, but um, you can see like his foot go down to hit the break, which is so much fun. Both breaks, cause my man's a G, you know what I'm saying? Two breaks, so you know, that. And then a little pop, and then as it pulls up, he gets his balance. I had him wiggling a lot, but then, um, yeah, it just rocked out. 
super proud of this. And again, I for when I'm animating and um, kind of just working on the scene, I turn off a lot of the other elements. Like I have a um, some steam in here, a volumetric, uh, uh, my ball lights and trees, my cities, and then I have a bunch of different cameras. Something that helps me out with cameras is I have an animation camera. Don't mind the spelling, I'm doing this quick. But when I'm animating, I'll lock on, I'll parent this to the bike, and then lock on a very specific area. So that way I can make sure that it's not too janky. Um, so there's always gonna be jankiness, uh, depending on, like his hands move a lot. It's, I should've, I know there's a way to parent. And again, I'm still learning, so I don't know. Um, there's a way to parent his hands, parent his hand rig, like his main control hand rig, to the a p bone inside the motorcycle rig. But still learning, still trying to figure it out. I hope I don't, I hope, I, it, again, this is my first time ever doing this type of a review or even process breakdown. Um, so if I miss a lot of stuff or I'm still, this is like a, I've never done this. I've never explained my process to really anyone except for, um, my friends, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm still, and then you can see at the end, I'm like, oh, I'm done animating. <laughs> Next is uh, rendering. I confirm speed, tempo, all that good stuff. I, I do a bunch of passes on the workbench. I do some workbench renders and then call it a day And as far as uh, make sure that everything is completed. Um, I'll throw them up on the screen, all the different passes, and if not, if I haven't already. Um, but after that, um, once everything's confirmed, everything looks good. And again, I turn on, um, I do some test renders as well, make sure everything's good throughout the, the sequence. After that, I go into uh, my post-production process. And for this one, I had a lot of fun because I had no boundaries and it was just me creating something brand new that has no brain language or nothing. So I ended up doing a lot of fun edits and just kind of oh, like just in a sense just whatever I wanted. Um, I used After Effects and Premiere. Something that really helped me. I mean there's th this project was kind of uh, relatively big because I I spent a lot of time on it just for fun and something that helped me is I started to build out these like covers for the movie if this was a movie and it's just fun exercise because I wanted there's certain things I want to do in life and I'm trying to build my portfolio to show that. And movie posters and covers with 3D elements is something that I really want to get into. So I had a perfect opportunity to be able to kind of create content, um, practice, and get better. And something in that process uh, actually made this video better. Those elements I use in my movie poster, in a sense, um, I implemented in the actual video to match the color and match the feel, the vibe. So, um, and also shout out to my, my main man, um, what, what, like, i I known him for a few years, but my buddy Fern, um, and check out his, his art himself, he's a freaking dope artist, and he's a freaking genius in many areas, but uh, I, I sent him my first version, and he kind of like got on the phone with me, and we had like an hour workshop, which helped me out so much, so um, can't go through this video without kind of giving him some love. Uh, 24k Fern Studios slash um, my homie Fern. I'll put all his stuff down in the description below. I started to make the cover and I don't know if we want to go into all the details on how I got to the final but um, I implemented a lot of the the elements that I used for that movie poster as far as like like this stock bokeh image like that's how I got some of the film grain and color to kind of pull, to kind of pull out um, these purples and and kind of like they kind of shifted the color spectrum or the yeah the color spectrum a little bit and it brought the reds out. Um, so in After Effects, I added in these streaks as well as um, some of the glare and glow. And then coming up with the concept, like so the concept of this is. It's like a little extreme nod at Akira, and they have Neo Tokyo. We're, we live near Philadelphia, I worked in Philadelphia for many years. Um, so it's Neo Phila, and 
I wanted to keep it super like cyberpunk Kira and have some fun with it and just also be wild and like no real regard to um, any rules. So it kind of opens up with this establishing shot that I specifically rendered out because I love establishing shots. They're, they're like one of my one of my tool like my go-to tools as far as like starting a video. If you look at a lot of movies, a lot of movies start out with boom, establishing shot, and then it kind of gets closer in. But this one kind of cuts into right into the meats and potatoes of it. Um, and then towards the end of the video, I was, I wanted it to just have fun, like play around with like some graphic, motion graphics. And then I was looking through this audio clip I had and I heard this, this weird sound, I was like, man, that's so interesting. It was like a, a, a jingle, a, a ring. And I was like, that'd be so cool to kind of like flash back to old Philadelphia. So I found this footage of Philadelphia in the 1970s. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. And I found that and then, um, yeah, in the text it says, uh, it actually says 1970 Philadelphia. And then, yeah, I just, fun fun effects trying to like make something super cyberpunk super a s different feel than i usually do i've been doing my my indie characters and, and everything inside a specific world for so like i don't know, like the last two years and it felt really good to kind of make something brand new fresh and just have some serious fun with it all right guys i think that's it i hopefully i covered everything again this isn't necessarily a tutorial it was just kind of like an overview of my process um it's a, it, it goes from simple a simple cube to building out the model to te uh, UVing the texture or beveling, UVing, texturing, then getting into the scene, building the scene, building the atmosphere, and animating, and then um, into post different effects that I want to have, um, and then compiling it all together, and then coming out with a few different versions because I have uh, I have like a full social clip that I'm going to be putting out or if it's probably already out honestly um, and then on top of that a um, the actual submission so the submission I'm probably gonna submit this either probably tomorrow it's due by the 12th today is the 8th um, I'll probably do it either to the 9th or 10th just to kind of get it in make sure everything's good close out this chapter because it's been a month this project like I said I started in uh, on January 31st so it's been about a month, a little over a month of getting to all, the, getting all this done. So super fun project. I'm proud of it. Probably my favorite piece of work I've ever done. And um, yeah, overall, just genuinely pumped. I appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you so much for all your support. Uh, we're trying to get, I'm trying to get my, get back into it. Life shifted just a little bit um, as far as like what I had planned, but it's okay. We're going to keep going and keep trying and and give it a good fair shake. Um, yeah, so make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. I love you so much. Happy freaking, I'm gonna, I kinda wanna post this on like tomorrow or Friday. It might be a two video week type week. All right guys, I love you guys. Happy whatever day it is. I'll holla at your boy son and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much again. We'll see you in the future.